Hi guys, welcome back to Taylor, and today we're going to be looking at the RNAV GPS from E12 into Stuart Witham Airfield using the G1000. So to set up the approach, we're going to use the direct button here and enter the four letter airport code. For American airports, you can find the code on the approach plate, which is shown as a three letter identifier, and then add a K to the beginning. And the K of course stands for Comerica. You'll see the first box is highlighted. You can start entering the code by using the small knob on the right hand side here. Once you've entered the first letter, then use the big knob to move along to the next space and fill in the next letter of the code, and so on until the whole code is entered. Once you've entered enough characters, the G1000 may recognize the airport and pre-fill the rest of the characters for you. However, you should double check it yourself to make sure that it's been done correctly. Once you're happy that the code's been input correctly, push enter and then enter again to activate. We now have direct routing information to Stewart Airport, but we don't have an approach selected. To select the approach, we need to click on the procedure button here. You'll see that select approach is highlighted. Push enter. The box containing the approach names is highlighted. Use the small knob to bring up the list of available approaches and select the one that you need. The RNAV12 in our case and push enter. You can then push on the small knob in order to use the big knob to change the cursor to the transition. We'll be coming from the north, we'll therefore be using the HADAT initial approach fix, so we'll select that one and push enter. And then we'll just use the small knob and the big knob in the same technique as before, in order to move the cursor down to activate the approach and push enter. And you'll see that the aircraft's now giving us direct routing towards HADAT. I've currently got the autopilot engaged, so I'm going to use the nav feature and the aircraft will now automatically turn towards the initial approach fix. Now what we need to do now is set the minimums bug for the approach. I've been unable to get LPV guidance for this approach in the simulator, so we're going to fly it to LNAV minimums, which you can see on the approach chart here is 420 feet. Click on the timer ref soft key here, then push the small knob in, Use the big knob to scroll down to the minimum section. Change off to barrow using the small knob. Big knob across to the numbers here for the numbers of feet. And then use the small knob to wind the minimums up to 420. I promise that I'll try to avoid using the word knob for the rest of the video. Once you've inputted the correct figure for minimums, push the timer ref button again and that will get rid of the references window. And you'll see that we now have a barrow minimums prompt on the PFD. And that's it, we're now fully set up for the approach. So let's skip ahead a bit closer to the initial approach fix. I'm now going to initiate a descent to 2000 feet. I'm going to achieve that by going to the altitude selector here and winding it down until 2000 is read on the PFD. I'm then going to select flight level change. I now need to manually reduce the power and the aircraft will pitch to maintain the selected speed. This will initiate the descent. Now the reason I'm descending to 2000 feet is because if I show you the chart here, you'll see HADA is the initial approach fix. After HADA, we need to make a right turn to 206 for eight miles to Petney. And you'll see here that we can be at or above 2000 feet on this portion of the route. So that's why I've initiated a descent. I would expect the mode here to be showing as terminal rather than en route, which basically makes the needle a bit more sensitive for the approach, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to be simulated. And you'll see here that we're now inside of a mile towards Haddock, so we're making that right turn very shortly. You'll notice that the G1000 moves the course deviation indicator around for us as well, so we don't have to worry about that. And the autopilot's still on, so the aircraft will actually turn automatically for us because it's still in nav mode. You could of course fly this manually, but I'm far too lazy for that. There we go, so we're now over Haddock, we're making the right turn to a 206 track towards Petney. The aircraft's still descending to 2000 feet, which is fine, and it will level off automatically when we get there. And you'll see here that the pitch enunciator is about to change from flight level change to altitude. So that means that the aircraft will now pitch to maintain 2000 feet and not worry about the speed. That means that we're going to have to change the power in order to maintain the airspeed, and that needs to be done manually in this aircraft. So we're now approaching 2,000 feet, the aircraft's pitching up, and I've just added some power in order to maintain the airspeed. So we're now inbound to Petney. I've increased the video speed to save some time, and you'll see here on the chart that after Petney we need to make a left turn to a 116 track, and we can descend to 1,600 feet, inbound to the final approach fix, which is Mainer. 
So we're now inside of a mile from Petney, so soon you'll see the CDI change around to the inbound track of 116 which is going to take us to the final approach fix of Mena. Shortly after that, I'll be initiating the descent to 1,600 feet. So there goes the CDI. The aircraft's now making the left turn to the 116 track inbound to Mena. Now what I'm looking at is the fact that we've got 6.1 nautical miles until we get to Mena, and we've got 400 feet to lose, which is not that much. So I'm not going to need to start the descent immediately, and I'm not going to need a massive rate of descent to get down to the 1,600 feet either. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm established on the final approach track. So I'm going to make sure I've got everything tidy. I'm going to bring the heading bug round to the final approach track as well. I'm going to have a uh, quick look at my approach chart while I've got the capacity. So I know that I'm LNAV only, so I need to use this Sevpu restriction of 660 feet or above. So I'll be watching that as I come down the approach. Just a quick reminder of the minimums was 420 feet. And then I can disconnect the autopilot and then fly manually from here. I've just taken out about 200 RPM. That should give us a couple of hundred feet per minute rear descent, and that'll take us down to the 1600 feet that we need to be at or above at Mena. And you see here, we've still got just about four miles to go until we get to Mena, so there really is no rush to lose this altitude, especially considering that it's an at or above restriction as well. So we're flying manually now, so it's even more important to make sure we keep a good scan going. So the best scan when you're flying the G1000 is to have the uh, initial point for your scan being the yellow aircraft symbol here or the chevrons and then you can scan to the left for the airspeed back to the center to the right for the altitude back to the center you can go to the right for the vertical speed back to the center and then down to the horizontal situation indicator scanning your course deviation and heading back up to the center and then you can scan from there up and make sure that your bank angle is set as you need it and then just keep that scan going the whole time. Now this video was uh, made on request from a subscriber. So if you do have any requests or want to see anything specific, please don't hesitate to leave a comment and I'll make it as soon as I can. It might take a while, but I will make it eventually. Now we're just about approaching this 1600 foot at or above restriction that we need to be at. So what I'll do just before we get to 1600 feet, I'll add some power and I'll let the nose pitch up by itself and then that should uh, level us off and then I'll just make sure that we're maintaining the altitude by keeping that scan going that I mentioned earlier. So I've increased the power now to just over 2100 RPM and you'll see the vertical speed is slowly starting to decrease and then that should level us off we should maintain that 1600 feet. So we're now approaching the final approach fix, which is Mena, after which time I'm going to set up and try and maintain approximately a 3 degree glide path descent towards the runway. I'll be using flaps 10 and about 80 knots for the approach. As we approach Mena, what I'll do is I'll reduce the power to around 1800 RPM, set flaps 10, and then initiate the descent. And there's Mena, there's the power reduction. Now I'm going to select flaps 10, remember the limiting speed for the flaps 10 uh, selection is 110 knots so we're well within that restriction and now we can initiate that descent and the speed settled down quite nicely at 80 knots there and I'd expect the rate of descent that we would need to be around 350 to 400 feet per minute for this speed so that's what I'm going to set initially and then we'll reassess it as we go down the approach now I would like to keep this going as a continuous descent so we do have the restriction of 660 feet or above at Zevpu there, which is 1.8 nautical miles from the runway. So I'd be tempted to just set a slightly lower rate of descent than what's required to make sure that we don't bust that restriction. So you see here, we've got around about two miles to go until we're at Zevpu. Now a normal three degree approach would be about 300 feet per nautical mile. So we'd expect to be about 600 feet above the restriction at Zevpu around about now. So that would put us about uh, 1260 feet. Uh, so if we have a look at the altitude here, we can see that we are a little bit high. So I've made a power reduction in order to just increase that rate of descent slightly so that we're not too high at Zevpu either. Now the reason that we are high is that it appears that we have a slight tailwind on this approach. Uh, which I don't, didn't think I set up, but apparently it's there anyway. 
So we're actually doing 90 knots over the ground, which means that if we multiply 90 by 5, that will give us the rate of descent required for a 3 degree approach, which is 450 feet. So we are going to need to make sure that we exceed 450 feet per minute in order to re-achieve that profile that we need to be on. And that's confirmed here. We've just crossed Sevpu at 900 feet, so we are definitely too high. So what I've done about it is I've reduced the power and I've increased the rate of descent. And you'll see now that we're exceeding the 450 feet per minute rate of descent and we're doing about 600 feet per minute, which should recapture the profile quite nicely for us. And the idea is to hit the VDP here, which is 1.1 nautical miles from the runway, at around the minimums, which will allow us to continue a normal rate of descent to landing. OK, so we're now approaching the minimums of 420 feet. You'll notice that when we do get to the minimums, the Barrow Minimums flag here on the PFD will turn amber. What we're going to do now is transition up to look slightly more outside, and we're looking for some sign of the runway environment. And there are the flashing runway end identifier lights, which we've got bang on the minimums there, so we're good to continue. So all I need to do now is reduce the power, make sure that we're within the white arc limiting speed for the flaps. Then I'm going to go to four flaps and continue the approach visually. So you see I need to come to the right slightly to align myself to the center line. So I would expect normally to be slightly more aligned with the runway in real life, but unfortunately in the simulator the GPS sensitivity doesn't change to approach mode, uh, which would mean full scale deflection on the course deviation indicator would be 0.3 nautical miles, whereas this is still stuck in en route mode, which has a much larger deviation. So normally looking to cross the threshold at around 65 knots, I'm about 5 knots faster than I want to be here. That's okay, I can just take the power out a little bit earlier. So go into ground effect, close the throttle, hold off, and then touch down. And that's how to fly an RNAV approach in the G1000. Thanks for watching another Tail Air tutorial. Keep the comments and requests coming in. I'll keep an eye out for them, and I'll be back again shortly with another video. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.